Hello there. I'd like to start off by saying that I've always had a bit of an identity crisis, and I've never lived in a country that didn't make me feel like a tourist. Now, first of all, I'm not Russian. I know that might sound a little bit counterintuitive given the name that I have adopted here on the internet, but I'm not Russian. I'm not of Russian lineage. I wasn't born in Russia, and the only affiliation that I really have with Russia is just an enjoyment of your vodka and your dash cam videos that feature the incessant use of the phrase suck a billet, billet. Now I also know that I'm not Swedish because I enjoy living my life within a certain set of confines that modern scientific professionals like to refer to as physics, and because that country just doesn't know what those are, I can easily declare to you right now that I am not Swedish. And as much as I want to call myself a Canadian, I don't have citizenship there anymore. So, I don't think Canada wants me back, I don't think Toronto wants me back, and specifically, I don't think Spadina Street wants me back. I think I've done more sinful activities on that one road than most people will do in their entire lives, which is absolutely churlish. And finally, I can't call myself American because I know the metric system. That's like the most un-American trait that any person on planet Earth can possess. If you know the metric system, that's... That's so anti-freedom. And before you ask, of course I know all the significant conversions. I know there's 28 grams in an ounce, 16 o's in a pound, and 2.2 pounds in a kilo, homeboy. Yeah, I know all of that. But even with that knowledge, I choose not to deal drugs, at least not Monday through Thursday, because that's inherently inefficient. And you know what? The metric system is designed to be efficient, so that would inherently be inefficient. Now, the overall point that I'm making here is that I don't have any kind of cultural or nationalistic bias when it comes to what I'm about to show you. I'm really not blaming the Russians, I'm not blaming the Swedes, I'm not blaming the Canadians, and I'm certainly not blaming Merka for what you're about to see. But before I get ahead of myself, this problem is so laughable, it is so mind-blowing that this is actually an issue that I decided to share it with you. So before I get ahead of myself, allow me to illustrate for you exactly what the problem is. Now, although I think the issue is pretty clear to all of you at this point, allow me just to take a few steps back and set out the playing field for you, just so that we're on a mutual basis of understanding as to exactly what's happening here. Okay, so, the 20th century gave birth to the advent of fighter aircraft, which are arguably the greatest technological advancement in the history of warfare, aside from nuclear weapons, but just their profound effect on armed conflict is extraordinary. And although I could ramble on all day about exactly what kind of profound effect aircraft had on the theater of warfare, I would just like to say that the most significant piece for me, the most significant advancement, is that numbers really don't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if you have a thousand guys, or ten thousand guys, or a hundred thousand guys, or a million guys, because you're not Hannibal of Carthage, and this isn't the Battle of Cana anymore. It doesn't matter just because this one piece of technology is such a massive force multiplier. And if you'll allow me to digress when speaking about aircraft, I know I could go on all day about exactly what kind of features and exactly what they bring to warfare. I think I must digress just for a second, just so I can speak from the eight-year-old portion of my heart by saying, do you even understand how baller these things are? Like, do you even understand? Like, just think what that means for us as 
an entire species as mankind over the entire chronological history since the beginning. With this new technology, it doesn't matter that you're a Spartan. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter how many of you there are. It doesn't matter what your shields are made out of. I can come by in this big metal vehicle that's defying the laws of gravity, traveling thousands of miles per hour, or kilometers per hour, of course, the metric system, that's fueled by this liquid that we pulled out of the ground, and I can just drop a bomb on you. I can just drop a bomb on you. And the best part is, it's not only, it's not only like I'm going to kill you. It's not like I'm going to kill your entire village or whatever the equivalent is. I'm probably going to kill everybody that you've ever seen, touched, or met. Because JDAMs don't really care who's on the ground when they explode. It's just, if you don't think that the invention of aircraft is just swag on 100,000, 100 trillion, get out of my face. All right, get out of my face. Go unplug your ethernet cable, stick your head in a bucket of sand, and just think about what you've done because these things are outrageous all right they're outrageous but of course just like every other technological advancement in military history it always comes with counters you have these newfound technological or strategic advantages and your enemy doesn't want you to have them so they come up with countering technologies to try to nullify whatever you have so of course with the invention of the aircraft came the invention of the anti-aircraft which is Basically, a, in layman's terms, it's kind of like, hey, you know that thing that you have? I don't want you to have that thing anymore. Even though I already have a comparable thing, I want another thing that's on the ground to make sure that your thing that's in the air isn't a thing. That's like the best description that I could come up with on such short notice. But of course, the Russian version of this anti-aircraft gun weaponry, at least the one that is used contemporarily, is the 9K22 Tunguska. And if I were to pull any kind of English adjective to describe this piece of weaponry to you, I think it would have to... I, I would easily say the easiest way to describe it to you is just suck a bleed, bleed. Any of you that have played Battlefield 4 know how terrifying the Tunguska is, but just allow me to take a moment just to piece everything back together here that I've been speaking about for like the past how many minutes. Allow me to just piece this back together. So starting from the beginning, we have the invention of aircraft and specifically fighter aircraft in the 20th century. It completely changes warfare. It's a massive force multiplier. Nothing is the same when it comes to militaries and conflicts once these new fighter aircraft are introduced. And then, you come up with something to counter them on the ground. Something that is literally designed to counteract these aircraft, called an anti-aircraft gun. And the Russian version of this, and the Russians usually create the most terrifying versions of anything, including assault rifles, is the 9K22 Tunguska, which weighs about 77,000 pounds or 35,000 kilograms. Goddamn metric system again. But it has a four-person crew. It has dual 2A38 30mm cannons that were designed by KBP that can be fired alternatively between 3,900 and 5,000 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 960 meters per second, basically making this thing into something that fires laser beams at aircraft that are the most terrifying pieces of weaponry in the world. And it is thwarted by a tree stump? I think my brain has run out of adjectives. I don't know what to say. My brain is just giving me the word what? 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 A tree stump? Is this really what's gonna take down a Tunguska? After what it's designed to do? Why? Why? I, why? What? 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 I, I can't help but just start thinking about that innocent Russian soldier on the ground, that officer. He's probably in such a bunch of turmoil right now. He has to go and tell his superior officer, he's going to tell his, and blah, 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 all the way on to the general. That general is going to have to tell Vladimir Putin that in some region of some country called Zavod 311, they failed because of a tree stump. What do you think Vladimir Putin is going to do? You think he's going to congratulate you? He's going to throw a bottle of Polish vodka at your head and yell, suck a bead until you leave his palace. This is so outrageous. But then again, I'm thinking about the other side of the coin. Okay, I'm thinking about the other side. I bet the Americans, just some second boot tenant, this is like his first deployment, Zavod 311, this fictitious conflict. This is hilarious. Think about what he can tell his platoon commander. That's so funny. He can just tell, like, okay... 
After action report, how exactly did you thwart the Russian offensive? Well, we hired some Canadians to plant some trees. And then, uh, of course, they're going to ask, you know, like, why, why did you have the Canadians do it? Why didn't you just plant the trees yourself? They're like, well, the Canadians are a little bit more efficient at it. Well, why are they more efficient? Well, well, they use the metric system, so it's... <laughs> What I'm trying to say here is that the metric system is essentially the reason that these tree stumps are so pervasive and are so annoying and they have essentially ruined the Russian anti-aircraft gun threat. But can I just boil this down to one thing by saying, why? Why, DICE? Why Russia? Why Sweden? Why Canada? Why United States? Why is this tree stump really going to be the Achilles heel of a, an advanced piece of technology told... I will never understand this, okay? I, I, I'll never understand this. It's just like the guy that from my t-shirt store, he ordered 27 medium crying seal t-shirts. I, I, I genuinely don't get it. I've... I've explored every single filing cabinet. There, There's a small guy inside my brain that is rifling through files in this seemingly bottomless pile of filing cabinets trying to come up with an explanation as to how any of this makes any kind of logical sense. And I don't know. I guess tree stumps are the best military invention since, I don't know, the metric system. I, I need to go take a walk. Or I need to like go eat something or take a shower because I don't. I'm. <laughs>